In this video, I want to talk about the LAC operon. So, what is an operon? An operon simply is a DNA segment with an operator, a promoter, and these things called structural genes that function in a highly coordinated manner. So, the LAC operon is an inducible system. So transcription of this gene, of, of the genes involved in LAC operon, is normally off. And it can be turned on, right? which means it can be induced. Now what is the LAC operon even involved in? Why do we care about it at all? Well, this is the way that prokaryotes, if they want to use the LAC operon, the LAC operon is involved with using lactose for energy. So if you recall, lactose is a disaccharide made up of glucose and galactose. So bacteria can use this for energy, and but they have to break lactose down into glucose and galactose. So the enzyme that catalyzes that reaction is called beta-galactosidase. So this here is the DNA segment concerned with all that. This is the lac operon. So the LAC operon has a bunch of different important features, and that's what we're going to mention here. The first of which is this here. This first portion of the DNA is called the regulatory gene. It is the regulatory gene. Now, in the case of the LAC operon, this is an inducible system, which is why this I is here. This I represents inducible. Now, specifically, this regulatory gene, in the case of the LAC operon, encodes for a repressor protein, which we'll talk about in more detail shortly. This regulatory gene can, in other cases, encode for an inducer protein, but we'll talk more about that in, in a later video. The CAP site here is the, the CAP stands for catabolite activator protein, and we'll talk about that in another video as well. Catabolite activator protein. This P here stands for the promoter. I actually want to write that up here. So promoter. Now, why is a promoter sequence important? Why do we care about that? Well, recall re promoter sequences bind the RNA polymerases. So, if this gene is going to be transcribed, it's going to bind here at the promoter. This O here stands for operator, which we mentioned just a moment ago. This is the operator. Now, the operator is important because what it does is it binds either the repressor protein or, um, or an inducer protein. Oops. In the case of the LAC operon, of course, since this, this gene here encodes a repressor protein, the operator will bind the repressor protein. But in a system in which this regulatory gene encodes an inducer, it, inducers can bind operators as well. So now what are these three things here, Z, Y, and A? These are all what we call structural genes. Now why are these things important? These all encode for proteins involved in breaking down lactose for energy, breaking down and using lacto lactose as an energy source. That's what these genes are important for. So each one of these actually encodes its own gene. The Z encodes for beta-galactosidase, which we mentioned just a moment ago, galactosidase. The Y encodes for a permease protein. And the A encodes for acetyltransferase. Now, all of those enzymes are important in, in getting this process to go, to break down lactose and using lactose as energy. Okay. So, the LAC operon is a regulated operon, and it's specifically it's inducible. So, it's dependent upon environmental changes and it's involved in using lactose for energy. So there are two scenarios 
that we want to consider. The first one is when there's no lactose around, uh, lactose or allolactose. So in the case lactose or allolactose is uh, the inducer of the system, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But if there's no lactose around, there is no inducer. Okay, so what's going on when there's no lactose around? Let's think about this. Okay, so first thing that happens is this regulatory gene is transcribed and it gets this mRNA. And the mRNA is translated into a repressor protein monomer. Once four of these monomers are formed, they form the repressor protein, which is functional, and this is actually a tetramer. Now what happens is this repressor protein, it goes, and where is it supposed to bind? It's supposed to bind at the operator. So that's actually what happens. The, op the operator is bound by the repressor protein. Now, once this repressor protein is bound here, this repressor protein blocks RNA polymerase that binds at the promoter. This is RNA polymerase here. If RNA polymerase is bound at the promoter, this repressor protein stops transcription. It represses transcription. So the RNA, RNA polymerase here is physically blocked. Okay, so RNA polymerase blocked by the repressor protein. So it's actually physically blocking it. So RNA polymerase wants to go ahead and transcribe Z, Y, and A, which are the genes that break down and use lactose for energy. But the repressor protein is bound, so it won't. Now, why is that? So actually, let's talk about what, what happens here. So first important thing is that there is no transcription of the structural genes in this case. Right? Z, Y, and A are not going to be transcribed because RNA polymerase can't get there because it's blocked by this repressor protein. So we have no proteins to break down lactose. They're not being transcribed, and they're not going to be translated if they're not transcribed. Now, why is this? Well, there's no lactose, right? There's no lactose to break down. So does this make sense? So there's, it, and it does, right? There's no need to make those proteins that break down and use lactose for energy if lactose is not available. Okay, so in the case of no lactose, we don't need to transcribe these genes, or not we, but the prokaryote itself doesn't need to. It doesn't need to make these these proteins to break down lactose, so there's no lactose around. Now, what if there is lactose? When there is lactose, there is the inducer, lactose or allolactose specifically. So when there is allolactose, those the, this inducer is around. So same idea happens as far as this regulatory gene goes. It's transcribed and then it's translated into the monomer, becomes a tetramer, and now this tetramer, this repressor protein is, is functional. But there is an important nuance here, and that is that we have these little, we have lactose now. So if we imagine these little pink dots to be lactose, what they're going to do is they're going to actually bind the repressor protein. So if the repressor protein was initially bound at the operator and su suddenly lactose becomes available, it's going to bind the repressor protein and cause the repressor protein to hop off of the, the operator. So let me go ahead and label this as lactose here. This lactose binds the repressor. So lactose is, of course, the inducer sometimes known as the co-inducer. So now nothing, the repressor protein is not going to bind at the operator. So what can happen? RNA polymerase binds at the promoter, and it goes. It can transcribe. So it's going to go through and transcribe these structural genes. So these structural genes become mRNA for the ZYNA genes, respectively. And then they're turned into proteins. Now these proteins, these can now break down lactose for energy because there's lactose around, right? Because lactose is present and available. That makes sense, right? So it would make sense that lactose is the inducer in this case. It causes the transcription of the genes that break it down and use it for energy. Okay, So that's the idea here. That's how changes in the cell's environment, right? The availability or lack thereof of lactose affects the transcription of this gene. Hope that video was helpful in understanding the lac operon. 
one last thing, I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com. See the description below for more details. Thank you for watching.